Welcome, everybody. I'm delighted to be with you today. Um, today, we're going to be presenting on the endocannabinoid system uh, on behalf of uh, Elixinol and try to get some basic information out there. Now, this is going to be a continuing program of weekly webcasts that are that are focused on clinical aspects of uh, cannabidiol for providers. I'll try to limit the events to about 15 minutes of presentation time and then open up for questions and, uh, and provide answers uh, after that. Now, these events are going to be posted um, on the Elixinol website under uh, Provider Portal, and I'll also be including some supporting documents there along with some references. That said, there will be some exceptions in the schedule, so I encourage you to take a look at the schedule to make sure that it fits in with your schedule and your time frame. And then I'll be also very interested in uh, your feedback and the topics that you want to see in the future about uh, cannabidiol um, and uh, the endocannabinoid system. So I want to start this topic off uh, talking about the endocannabinoid system because it's a um, a broad range and a very basic uh, fundamental understanding of, of how cannabinoids work within our body. But first, let me introduce myself. Um, I'm uh, Dr. Philip Blair, an MD, uh, graduated from West Point in 1972 and from the University of Miami School of Medicine in, in 1978. Um, I spent uh, 30 years in the Army and I retired uh, as a colonel in 1996. I did disease management for about 15 years, and I'm currently the president of ProHealth Advisors, a disease management company. Now, over the last three years, I've been researching and using uh, cannabidiol in clinical care with some extensive experience in, um, in learning the applications and uh, creating uh, different ways that uh, CBD can be used. Um, So what we want to cover today is the endocannabinoid system in health, uh, some of the common mechanisms that are involved with uh, the endocannabinoid system, how it works within the body, and then the endocannabinoid system as uh, a dysfunctional system um, in disease. Um, we'll try to move through these uh, fairly quickly and get uh, the, this basic information out. So I guess a great summary for the endocannabinoid system is this quote, uh, that all about relaxing, eating, sleeping, forgetting, and protecting. It's really a master control system that we've really been unaware of for a long, long time. Uh, only recently have we uh, learned more about the endocannabinoid system. It was first identified in 1992. An overriding concept would be that this is the master regulatory system uh, that goes on in the body. It's sort of the behind the scenes uh, mechanism that is at play for working on the immunologic system, um, how our brain functions, um, and uh, how our gastrointestinal tract uh, works, and, and all of the systems as a matter of fact. So although um, we think of uh, these um, top items that we have here, the, the five at the top. I think that gives you a summary for what uh, the endocannabinoid system really is all about and how pervasive it is uh, throughout the body. So in terms of research, there's been well over 7,000 articles that have been offered uh, and are available at PubMed. Um, and of course, there's detailed information that are available on particular topics. And I think one of the concepts here is that what the endocannabinoid system is doing is maintaining a balance within the body or homeostasis, keeping it uh, well-functioning and at optimum levels at all times. What happens when it's not at optimum conditioning and uh, function, then we're seeing dysfunction and we're seeing disorders uh, and uh, significant disease. So if we look at where is the endocannabinoid system in the body, you get this broad range approach where it's really in uh, the brain and the peripheral nerves, that's for sure, uh, but it's also located in the fat as well as the skeletal muscles, the liver, 
the pancreas, the gastrointestinal tract. In fact, all of the organs contain uh, connections to the endocannabinoid system. Uh, otherwise, it wouldn't be able to exert its um, homeostatic uh, mechanism uh, on all these functions. So it's a really good understanding that it is quite pervasive all over the body in, in all different locations. Now, a key action uh, that we usually think of in terms of the endocannabinoids is, is actually in the brain, where we're, we're talking about how it modulates cognition and memory and many of our cerebral functions. If we're looking at specific mechanisms, what we're seeing with the endocannabinoid system is this regulation and modulation, primarily in the synapses, but it actually includes other areas. For instance, the, in the endocannabinoid system, we're seeing the modulation of uh, neurotransmitters from the um, one side of the neuron to the, uh, to the connecting neuron. And so it's adjusting the levels of neurotransmitters. We also see it in terms of the brain inflammation, the inflammatory processes that occur in the brain with the glial cells and the astroglial cells are going on right there and uh, CBD and, and, and well, the endocannabinoid system has a great influence on those particular things. In addition, we're seeing a blood brain barrier permeability changes that are controlled by the endocannabinoid system um, overall. So you can see that uh, reductions or changes in the permeability of the blood-brain barrier may allow for different chemicals and substances to come in, especially in the cases of stroke or trauma to the brain. In addition, we're seeing that the endocannabinoid system is your key element with respect uh, to the neural protection, to protecting the nerve cells that are already there. And it's really quite well established. Could you excuse me just a moment? Okay, I just wanted to turn off the, the uh, microphone for everybody who was uh, listening so that it didn't get any feedback uh, into the system. So we got that taken care of, let me carry on. So, um, so I wanna talk about the neuroprotective effects that CBD offers. Unfortunately, I've got some feedback coming in and I'd like to be able to stop that. Okay, I think I've got it there. All right, so I was talking about the neural protection. So the endocannabinoid system is key and fundamental in terms of protecting uh, the brain cells from degeneration. And that's probably the reason why and the key element uh, that was behind the Department of Health and Human Services uh, patent action in 2003 uh, to patent cannabidiol and other cannabinoids uh, because of its neuroprotective capability that it offered. In addition, we're seeing the endocannabinoid system deeply integrated into cellular metabolism, um, both at the, the nuclear level and um, at the mitochondrial. So it's controlling the flow of energy and the processing uh, and production of energy within uh, the brain and the nerve tissues. So you can see how uh, broad ranging that the endocannabinoid system is performing in the brain and in the nerve tissues and the why it is a, a key element, a key system that's involved in um, maintaining and preserving um, neurologic function and uh, cognitive function. So that's how can, and the endocannabinoid system works in health. But what about in diseases, conditions that we are encountering um, and uh, problems and, and different difficulties? Well, it's been coined the term uh, clinical endocannabinoid deficiency that really characterizes when the endocannabinoid system gets out of balance. Now, here we have a homeostatic mechanism that is out of balance, and that can only lead to disruption and other problems. And so what we actually are finding is that so many of these diseases that I have listed here below 
uh, are involved with disruptions and disturbances in the endocannabinoid system, whether that's increase in number of receptors with a decrease in the amount of the endocannabinoids, or it's the other way around. In either case, what we're seeing is um, these um, associations uh, with the different disease entities in the different tissue that's involved. So um, in terms of developing a, well, one strategy fits all, or um, it, that doesn't work very clearly because in some cases you have an increased number of receptors and in other cases you have an increased amount of um, endocannabinoids and there is dysfunction going on. But almost each of these has a specific pattern that's occurring in the uh, tissue areas that, um, uh, where the endocannabinoid system is active. And you can see that it full, runs a full range of uh, conditions, uh, the syndromes, the developmental problems, behavioral and degenerative, as well as inflammatory, affecting the bones, the bowel, and the brain. So if we're dealing with a broad-ranging and homeostatic mechanism, how can we change the endocannabinoid system, especially if we're involved with some sort of disease process? So here we have the concept that we need to restore, the endocannabinoid system gets out of balance in some way, and how do we restore it? Or how do we maintain it? Uh, that's probably the best uh, approach to it. Well, we maintain it with things like we've always heard about that are healthy in terms of lifestyle, diet, exercise, sleep. All those things are important. And it's very, there's very good evidence to show that these are important and that they have a major impact on sustaining the endocannabinoid system and the, the maintaining a balance in the body. But we've also got evidence showing that acupuncture, massage, and meditation, including um, osteopathic manipulation significantly alters and rebalances the endocannabinoid system in restoring uh, some uh, of the function, especially in these disease states or when there's problems. So that the endocannabinoid system really makes, is really making sense in terms of these other therapies, what we didn't really have an understanding of why they were working. Here we've got an explanation of how it can make changes in the body and restore health. In addition, of course, we've got the, the drugs, and many of our drugs that we use commonly or are commonly used in, in, um, in medical care are in fact modulators or they, they are affecting the endocannabinoid system. Once again, that may be the reason why that they can be, they can be so effective because they are making changes. But but not always, because they may make an improvement in one way, but they, uh, that can cause a shift in the endocannabinoid system uh, to an extreme and not leave it balanced um, for a recovery, a total recovery. In addition, there are herbs as well as omega-3 oils that play a major role in the functioning of the endocannabinoid system. A special note about the omega-3s is that they actually are, are shown to be precursors to the endocannabinoids and the endocannabinoid system. And so it's very important to have the omega-3s um, on board for your patients that they're, they're using to restore um, their endocannabinoid system and enhance it. And, and that's one of the reasons why uh, they, that omega-3s have been so helpful in a broad range of conditions. And finally, there are specific um, uh, phytocannabinoids or cannabinoids that are coming from the plant substances that have an effect uh, specifically on the endocannabinoid system. And that's where um, we're talking about CBD and THC primarily, but there are other cannabinoids that are um, in other plants. Uh, example is uh, flax um, and other substances. So these all have a role in enhancing the endocannabinoid system and improving people's health. Now, if we're looking at cannabidiol specifically, what does cannabidiol do within the endocannabinoid system? What we're seeing with cannabidiol is an increase um, in the endocannabinoid agonists, those substances like uh, anandamide and 2-AG, which are um, the 
hallmarks of the endocannabinoid system, the activators, it's making those get increased. It's improving the production and the uh, supply of those particular agonists. It's modulating the cannabinoid receptors, reducing them or increasing them in other cases to get balanced and restore the endocannabinoid system. And it's modulating the genes in the nucleus um, that are responsible for balancing the endocannabinoid system, providing uh, the chemicals, both um, the ones that are involved, uh, the primary endocannabinoids, as well as the receptors, but also those other substances that are involved with the uh, formation of the endocannabinoids, as well as the breakdown. In addition, we're seeing cannabidiol assist with cellular metabolism. So there are some direct effects that are going on in the mitochondria, as well as some of the other organelles within inside the cell. Very positive effects. Many of these mechanisms are actually outside of the endocannabinoid system. They're working in an area that is uh, undefined at the present time, but they are part and parcel. Uh, they are restoring the body's health uh, through this particular system. So why should we use uh, CBD? Well, I think CBD is, has a role to improve the whole person. And although we're generally focused on one particular problem, uh, many times, uh, whether that's uh, pain or anxiety or um, one of the developmental disorders or it's epilepsy, if we look at the broad range of benefits of CBD, then, we, then we're really looking at improving the person as a whole. And what's wonderful about CBD is its ability to affect the whole person and improve multiple different systems and, and problems uh, and it restore people's lives to a, a much more higher and high quality life. In addition, the CBD is safe and non-toxic. We're not seeing any adverse effects coming from it. There's no toxicity um, that comes from CBD. And uh, no tolerance or addiction or withdrawal or drug interactions are occurring uh, in, in my experience over the last three years. Furthermore, we're looking at a huge number of side benefits that enhances um, the, our, our regular function. So we're talking about alertness, memory, and activity, and mood, all the things that everybody is looking to make optimum. So how can you, you use uh, cannabidiol? How is it best used? Well, it should be part of a comprehensive treatment plan. Now, just using the cannabidiol alone uh, may provide a, a bridge uh, for um, improving their health at the moment, gaining confidence, and allowing them to start on a broader plan. But you as providers know very well that there are other treatments that are valuable and effective. And we talked about those lifestyle changes that need to be there. Those are the things that are going to change the background and the, the fundamentals of that individual. And CBD is going to be that helper, that uh, addition on the way that's going to move them along to a successful recovery while taking care of many of their very adverse symptoms uh, so that they can move on to the therapy that you have planned. Now, when you're using CBD, I want you to expect immediate results for most symptoms in minutes, hours, or days. And what the, I mean is that you need to follow up very early on these patients to find out how they're doing because oftentimes they misunderstand the directions. They misunderstand how it can be used and they need to have some guidance and that's where your role is very important. But because of the immediate effects that you expect to see, then it's important to talk to them and to look for these types of changes. If they're not making the changes, um, make rapid adjustments in the dose to meet that individual need. So you want to increase uh, the amount of CBD. If it's non-toxic and there's no significant side effects from it, we'll increase it to the level of effectiveness that's there. And then if you're getting fatigue, which is one of those rare side effects that does occur with it, decrease uh, the dose of it. It's just a little bit too strong for those individuals. Um, very simple uh, uh, guidance on that is to either double the dose or cut the dose in half in order to meet their particular needs. So that's what I wanted to get across here on this particular presentation, our first one and introduce you to 
um, the endocannabinoid system as a real foundation for how cannabidiol works and the cannabinoids uh, let you uh, have a, a, an understanding of how it integrates within uh, the therapy and the program for all of providers. And I want to um, offer uh, and encourage you to partner with me uh, and Elixinol for the best results for your patients. I'd like, uh, I have a lot of information I'd like to share um, with how you can get the best results and the best effects uh, from cannabidiol. And I'd be delighted to uh, let you know uh, more about that. And I'd love for you to come back and um, keep um, listening to uh, my program, as well as providing feedback. Uh, give us some direction about what direction or um, what uh, topics that you'd like to have covered. And we'll try to address those on a regular basis. Uh, below here, I've listed off a couple references that are uh, key in understanding um, the endocannabinoid system and some things about the uh, deficiency syndrome that you may be seeing um, in many of your patients.